They say nice guys finish last, right? <laughs> well, the best back in the best shape of my life, like the checks cash and now they paying the price, right? And showdowns, I showcase my skills. Throw weight around my weight in pounds, tipping the scale. <laughs> Taking this whole year. <laughs> Catch up. We have all kinds of different types of people on this show, and they're, you know, entering the show or are submitted for the show for different types of reasons. Sometimes it's to improve their body but sometimes it's to improve their self-confidence or to overcome something else. Today's uh, situation is a guy named Sean. Now, Sean wants to build his body and he's wanted to for a long time, but one thing that he suffers from is anxiety. A lot of people suffer from this. So he wanted to enter this show so that he could come, overcome his social anxiety so that he could get out of the comfort zone and do something that he normally wouldn't do. And that's what the show is all about, is self-improvement and personal development. Be it physical, or be it emotional, mental, whatever the situation is. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Sean. Sean, how's it going? So first of all, thank you for coming here. I know this is outside your comfort zone. First of all, doing the whole training thing, and second of all, even being in front of a camera. Have you ever been in front of a camera before? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I understand it can be nerve wracking. Uh, there's a lot of people at home, believe me, if they're in front of a camera, they'd be nervous too. So don't worry about that. Now, tell me about training with Kia. Uh, first of all, um, what was your goals in terms of body-wise, what you wanted to accomplish with this? I just wanted to be really wrapped and toned and muscular, the best I could be. Cool, so you had never been to a gym before? No, no. Never. I had it, I worked out at my house. Yeah? And what kind of training did you do at your house? Just that, uh, I got some weights and I, I did anything I could, you know. Yeah. Followed P90X I was doing for a while. Yeah. Tai Bo, just try to get in the best shape I could at home. So, uh, what kind of uh, changes have you experienced uh, since you started working with Keo? I got uh, I, I've come out of my comfort zone with her, and she she really helps me. She helps me focus. Yeah. Makes me feel relaxed, and I've been getting uh, losing a lot of body fat, getting in shape, and uh, getting toned more. I've been feeling been feeling a lot more confident than I used to be. Now, as you see these changes develop, how, how long have you been training with Keo now since you submitted for the show? Uh, a couple of months. Okay, uh, now when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you think to yourself? I feel more confident. I, I like the direction this is going and I like the progress. I, yeah. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna kill it. She tells me to kill it and that's what I'm gonna do. Awesome, well, hey, let's bring in this, this killer right now. Kyo, come on out here. Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you again. Nice to see awesome you again. Awesome work, Kyo. Yeah, I, I, I'm so excited uh, that I got a chance to work with Sean. Um, when I actually got uh, a chance to work with Sean, um, you know, I was told that he had an anxiety issue, so that's something I can relate with. During my university days, I actually suffered from uh, a lot of anxiety, and I was on different medications for it. Um, this during the time that I was actually taking my uh, kinesiology courses to get my kinesiology degree. So obviously, the doctor prescribed a bunch of different drugs, including lorazepam, diazepam, and all those things to keep me calm and, and focused. Uh, even at one point, I was on Ritalin. Okay, so. Um, I didn't have a, a proper sort of diet and criteria and then I started um, you know, reading up on different ways to deal with anxiety because there's no way I wanted to be on drugs for the majority of my life. Um, so one of the things that really helped was going to the gym and actually cleaning up my diet a little bit. You know, the way you eat does help the way you think. So if you can change what you eat and what you do you know, physically, the mental aspect comes to play as well. So I think that's one of the reasons why today I'm not on any sort of um, you know drugs or, or any sort of a, you know I don't suffer from any anxiety issues maybe once in a, in a while but you know I learned how to take care of that 
you know, through, through exercise. Um, so one of the things I really admire about Sean is the fact that, you know, if I give him a diet plan, he doesn't think about cheating at all. He just goes, I'm going to follow it 24-7. Yeah, yeah. I can tell he's serious. He's got all his gear on already. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what uh, changes he's had since you started working with him in terms of body fat and muscle gain and all these things? Yeah, for sure. So when we first started, he, he still had a little bit of a gut. Uh -huh. You know, he didn't have the best posture. Um, he had a little bit of a, a closed off posture. Now you see him walking around, he's just like confident. He's got a confident stance. Uh, I got him doing a lot more Olympic lifts just to get his conditioning down. Uh, a lot more functional movements to actually help the muscle grow as a whole, proportion wise. Um, he hasn't been working on a uh, specific arm day or anything like that, nothing supplementary, so we're just basically using foundational exercise and as well as a lot of metabolic conditioning to, to help him get, you know, to the best sort of shape of his life. So now he's walking upright, happy, confident. And now, uh, what's the goal moving forward? What, uh, what do you want to do with him diet-wise and training-wise just to get him, you know, to continue with this progress? So, with Sean, I started him off with, uh, you know, a very sort of uh, little-known sort of uh, diet called the Anabolic Diet, written by Dr. D. Pasquale. Um, you know, the conventional sort of ketosis diet basically takes away carbs and fat and makes it a high-protein sort of diet. His diet consists of a high-fat diet, um, you know, a little bit of protein, then even less carbs, and it's a cycle, right? So, after about every five days, he gets uh, two days to actually eat nothing but high carbs and, and you know, moderate protein meals, and that helps him retain his muscle. Um, you know, he does cardio less than three times a week, and uh, we actually took him off cardio so he can actually um, swell and, and basically get that uh, muscle tone back. And we're gonna put him slowly, put him back onto a uh, you know car carbohydrate-based sort of uh, um, diet. You know, he started off you know being shy, and now he just like looks like a Thor for yeah. sure. <laughs> well, the hair. I told him not to cut his hair for the show. Uh, a little bit of uh, trivia for you. You mentioned the anabolic diet by uh, Dr. Di Pasquale. Yes. Uh, Dr. Di Pasquale is actually from my hometown, and when I started working out at the age of 16, uh, I, were, I started working out. It was my first job at the gym that he owned there. No way. Yeah, yeah, and um, actually his, uh, his whole family was involved in that, so I got to know him really well. And I went on the anabolic diet when I was like 17 years old, and I went away to university, and it was funny because I go to the cafeteria and I was ordering all this meat and this is like way before like all the protein craze and like low carb thing caught on. And I go to the cafeteria and just order a bunch of meat. And uh, I remember one time I did this a few days in a row and um, the girl at the cafeteria pulled me aside and said, I'm not really supposed to tell you this because you know, we want your business but it's not healthy for you to eat all this meat. And, uh, and it was just so weird to them that I kept going in there and ordering meat. But uh, shout out to Dr. Di Pasquale. <laughs> I just, small world. So, yeah, small world. And as appreciation, Advanced Genetics would like to hook you up with some gear. So we got a workout bag. We were just talking about how you need new one. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new workout bag? All right, perfect. And uh, understand you are extra large. Considering how tall you are, I can understand why. So there is a uh, new shirt for you. <laughs> and we got some creatine muscle builder. And to put all that stuff in, we got you, of course, a shaker cup to mix it up with. Well, thanks for coming out. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. And thank you for inspiring others to get out of the comfort zone and to work on themselves, not just their body, but to challenge themselves to do things that they normally wouldn't to do, you know, because you only live once and that's what life is all about. I am with my man, Johnny. Johnny, we followed you for a while and um, you just got finished competing at nationals again. You placed second, which is unbelievable because it gets tougher every year and you look bigger, you look leaner, it's crazy. Tell me about competing this year and, and your experience with that. Going into prep, like I, I put on four pounds in last year and it came in a lot leaner. Um, did I win? No, um, but I kept my placing, which was good. So my body changed, I kept what I needed to and I kept the placing. So that's a big positive I brought out of uh, this year's uh, prep and competing. So what was the difference in the training? Was it just more intense or uh... Was it just more of it? What was it made the difference in that? Um, anyone who really has ever really kind of mentioned into YDT, it's a lot of, um, it's getting into a lot of like uh, different muscle fibers sort of in training. And your training plan never stays the same. So we have like YDT basically like three weeks. 
and they change every time. So you would change the other, the time of retention, which would be like, you know, your eccentric motion or your negative, so to speak. That would change each week. Your rep range would change each week. Your time, your rest time would change each week. And then the workouts would change each week as well. So you go from um, a lower rep in a high, lower reps with like slower uh, eccentric to um, at the end doing giant sets and monster sets. So it incorporated a lot of different um, muscle fibers plus cardiovascular. So it was very, very grueling workouts. It brought me back a lot to uh, training like football too because it was very injury preventive as well too. And like ego lifting didn't exist. So mm. I was going in there dropping weights considerably just to actually um, achieve the reps and the sets I had to do. So yeah. that alone was actually uh, one of the harder parts there too. Well, and imagine with keeping your heart rate up and all that stuff that you're burning a lot of calories and all that. And uh, Now, I, I was talking to Chris Johnson about this, and we're here at the, you know, Halifax Nationals. He was saying that he thought that, uh, he thought Halifax had one of the best bodybuilding scenes uh, across Canada, uh, which, you know, kind of surprised me because it's, it's such a small place compared to something like Ontario or whatever. Um, do you agree with that? And if so, like, what do you attribute that to? Um, I, I, I have to agree with it, not just because I'm from here, because I, uh, I'm originally from Ontario. So, yeah. um, and I know how Ontario works when it comes to, like, you know, sports, entertainment, and whatnot. And there's a ton. Like, if you go to Ontario, like, places, places like Toronto, um, if you go to Edmonton, if you go to Calgary, um, a lot of different places, Vancouver, they have pro teams. They have, you know, pro hockey, pro baseball, pro footballers around. And here, we, when I played football, we only had the Mooseheads and the St. Mary's Huskies. So then we have bodybuilding. It's actually like, it's a, it's a pretty like niche sport where it's, everybody's involved in the, in the sense where it is a really small community, but a lot of people do it. So we'll have shows that will sell out every year. We'll sell out shows. We'll have 200 plus competitors at novice shows every year. Oh wow. So it's like the, uh, the interest is huge within the, uh, the sport plus, you don't have to look very far to see pros that are in the area. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're right there. You're pro level uh, athletes or you're just a high level um, uh, national athlete. So like each year we, we put in at least like two or three national competitors every year. And if you look at our, our provincial shows, there's like two or three in a class that are national competitors. Yeah. So it's like, it's, 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 a, really, uh, it's a really unique area where it's small, but bodybuilding is pretty big in the area. So I gotta agree with it because there's nothing else really to take away from the attention from us. Yeah. How we have like, you know, a professional football team, maybe wouldn't be as, you know, as uh, sought after, but since yeah. we don't, it's something everybody get involved with, right? That's great. It's, uh, it's like its own little scene here. Yeah. Um, now tell me about uh, Dream Chasing. This is your brand, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell me about its origins and its great name. Um, Dream Chasing is something I came up with three years ago. Um, for, when I first started bodybuilding, I came off of a, um, uh, a, a long time addiction with uh, substance abuse, basically. And uh, I went to therapy, and um, when I started bodybuilding, it gave me an ability to actually focus into something more positive. And uh, while I found out, even though you have those things in your life that happen, life's still gonna happen no matter what. And there's gonna be distractions, there's gonna be ups and downs. So there's times in my life where you know, it seemed really hard, but it was like, there's always that goal when it came to bodybuilding. For my own personal life, there's always like a, there's always a goal. Like there was a show that's coming up and I had to be my best foot show regardless of anything else. You mentioned past addictions or whatever. I mean, I've got to imagine to do bodybuilding, even for myself, like um, my father had addiction issues, his father had addiction. So I, I think that there's a correlation between bodybuilding because you kind of have to have an addictive personality yeah. to be like yeah. <laughs> sticking to an insane diet and yeah, doing all yeah. the training and everything. Um, do you feel that it's like a positive addiction or that you turn like basically that energy and funnel in a new direction or? It's, I think, I think, it, um, I think in, a, in a sense this you have to have some kind of addiction or obsession with some kind of goal. Bodybuilding more so than other, other because it's so regimented and it's so like particular, like it's, it doesn't stop. When you want to play football, you know, you got the field, you took your shoes off, you're done playing football. When you bodybuild, it's 24-7 no matter what. So when it comes to this being like, you know, for people who have had addictions in the past, when I go through therapy, um, when I talk with therapists and whatnot, the funniest thing about it was, is that I've always had something that was stimulating my mind in a positive way. 
Yeah. And bodybuilding is something that stimulates me in a positive way. Do you know yet what your show you're planning to do, or are you gonna kind of sit it out for right now and? Just prepare for next year. And I'm not gonna. I don't want to get into the. I don't want to get ever into a habit of chasing a place. In. If I'm not enjoying or starting a prep because I want to and want to and love it, I'm not gonna put my all into it. So like. Yeah. North Americans are in eight weeks. There's no way I can put myself. I don't want to prep right now. Yeah. Yeah. I just got off prepping for 12 weeks plus. So like, I'm good with just you know taking my time, step back, heal up. I got nicks and bruises. I got a sciatic problem I'm dealing with my back. So you know, getting this to flourish and get better with that, and then chase those dreams while I'm on off season and enjoy building in the off season. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, how uh, how can people get in touch with you or find out how to get the brand? Um, you can go to uh, dreamchasing.ca. Um, we have this actually uh, a good website up so you can get our uh, we have an online store so all the products you see here we have women's tights that are made by American Apparel um, Next Level uh, does our t-shirts and um, we also have like tank tops for men t-shirts for uh, men and we have leggings and tank tops for women as well and then um, you can mess me on there for sure and then you can just reach me on my Facebook um, Johnny uh, Johnny Shree was my fan page and then if you ever want to just email me or just talk, whatever, um, johnny.shreve at gmail.com. And I'm willing to just, uh, you know, take emails and just, you know, talk to an event, say your story. Um, I'm here to listen. Well, Johnny, thanks for supporting the community as always and uh, being there as a uh, positive role model for others. And uh, good luck in your continued uh, journey. I know they keep improving, so your time's going to come, man. It's just a matter of time, so. Yes. Yeah. All right, appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much. All right, awesome. Cool. We have a really special uh, uh, person to introduce you to today. Her name is uh, Melanie Gardner. And uh, in addition to being a pro, she's also a cancer survivor. And at, with this show, we always try to get, you know, different stories, different struggles, different things that people overcome. And, you know, it's a new challenge to get on the stage again after going through the chemotherapy and the other things that she's had to go through. So let's bring out Melanie Garner. Hey Melanie, pleasure. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I don't have any uh, bags for her or uh, supplements or gear because she's actually uh, sponsored by Advanced Genetics, which sponsors the show, so represent Advanced Genetics. Absolutely. All right, um, how did it feel to turn pro? Oh, it was amazing. It was an amazing accomplishment. Um, something that was unexpected for me when I went into the Arnolds. I was hoping for top 10. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, what, uh, what category are you in? Figure. Figure, okay. Yeah. So have you done any other pro shows since that uh, Toronto pro show? No, I was uh, diagnosed with cancer um, probably about six months after I had done the Toronto pro show. I was battling trying to get some answers from doctors during that time. So I Okay. To... So if you don't mind me asking, what was some of the symptoms or things that you were feeling that led you to go see a doctor? If um, that's how it went. Yeah, I had a lump on my right side of my right breast. Mm. Yeah. So I had gone to the doctors about that and went through a number of tests um, that didn't show anything. The mammogram came back negative. Uh, my MRI came back negative. Um, I ended up over in the States to get help because the doctors in Canada were telling me I was fine when I knew that I wasn't. I had some blood and change of tissue um, as well. So uh, I went to the States and had a, a lumpectomy. I paid a good amount of money to get some help and then the results came back from that, that it was um, full-blown aggressive breast cancer. Wow, well, so uh, the doctors here did, weren't able to pick up on that? It's pretty scary. It was. I was never offered um, a biopsy in mm. Canada, so I had gone across the border for that. Um, when I had the results back from the biopsy, it came back as atypical. It didn't come back as full-blown cancer, but at this time, the, the tissue was changing in the breast, and there was some other, some other issues that made me keep pushing for it. Uh, more answers. So if you were in Canada, what would have happened? Would it have just continued to evolve and, and it would have been diagnosed or could it have been something that was very it's a time, dangerous? It's a timeline thing. Um, the doctor said because it was only atypical that the test result came back, it was going to be three to six months for them to take the lump out to test it. Um, when I went to a specialist, 
about it, a Canadian specialist, he said, well, you've been to this doctor, that doctor, you've been in this hospital. He's like, what do you want from me? And I said, well, I want some answers. He goes, well, it works it, over here. We're in Canada. It's a three to six month wait. Mm. And I, and I wasn't going to settle for that. So I went to the States. I paid out of pocket three days later and had the lumpectomy and the results from that started the ball moving in Canada much faster. Well, thank goodness that uh, you got the ball moving. So when you came back to Canada and saw the doctors here, <laughs> um, what, what was the next steps after that? Did they give you certain options? Or? Well, the doctors in the States pushed for me to get the best treatment possible, which was in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up two weeks later in Toronto um, with a full spectrum of testing. So they tested everything for me. Um, and then a few weeks later after that, then I had my big surgery. So I had a right mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And then once I healed from that, then it was treatments, chemotherapy and radiation. Now, I, I don't know in your case, I, I know a couple of women that have had a similar type of cancer. Um, they've either given a choice of chemotherapy or not chemotherapy. Was that even an option for you or was it that you had to definitely get it? Um, I guess we all have an option if we, if we choose, but with triple negative breast cancer, there's no other treatment okay. other than radiation and chemotherapy because it wasn't a hormone fed cancer there was no no other choice and triple negative is super aggressive so you have to get at it right away okay now uh, what what was the treatment process that you went through I did six rounds of chemotherapy once every three weeks wow. and then I had a month off after that and did 25 uh, radiation back to back five days a week for five weeks and what was that process like what, what did you have to go through for the radiation or all of it? All of it. I all mean, it. <laughs> what, what um, was hard? The chemotherapy, I was more frightened of because it was a, a poison into the into the body, into the bloodstream. Um, but it's there to get every little cell possible. And um, I worked with uh, homeopathic doctors as well, so mm -hmm. I supplemented to stay strong and healthy through the chemotherapy. I only had a couple of days that I was down. Mm -hmm. Majority of the time, I still went to the gym. I still trained, I ate really well, I alkalined my body, so tons of greens, juicing, supplementation. Um, that alkaline, uh, that the alkaline thing, I know that uh, a lot of the um, non-traditional medicine talk about that. Has uh, traditional medicine now taken that on or are they still not believing in that? Uh, I, mm -hmm. Doctors only know what, what they know and what they're educated in and then that's yeah. the medicine. So. Uh, diet, nutrition, supplementation, I had to do all that research on my own. Okay. Is there is there pretty good evidence of that uh, to back up the, you know, doing a more alkaline-based diet? Absolutely. And all they say that cancer feeds on sugar, mm. so eliminating sugar and carbohydrates and increasing greens and keeping the body at an alkaline state instead of an acidic state really helps. Mm. helps you stay strong and healthy, but it's supposed to help fight cancer as well. Okay. So you had your last chemotherapy when? I had my last chemotherapy at the end of August, and I just finished my radiation four weeks ago. Okay, so are you done now, like I'm as far done. as you know? Okay. Yep, done now. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're crazy now in a good way. <laughs> um, you know, you want to compete again. I'm, yeah. You, you know, I and uh, you know that a lot of respect for you to do that because you know I, there's a lot of people out there they make excuses for even not working out. Uh, you've been through this, and you still want to compete at the highest level. So uh, do you know what show that you're planning on doing? Well, I'm for sure gonna do the Toronto Pro Show. Yeah. And my coach and I are still on the fence of a few other shows that I'd like to do. I haven't chosen them yet. Um, the reason why I'm doing this now isn't just necessarily for me, but this is for other people. I want people to know that cancer isn't a death sentence. Mm -hmm. That you know, if you stay strong and you stay positive mind and you fight, can still have your life and you can get through something like this so I want to do this a lot for my fans and for people that that may feel that life's over for them mm -hmm. you know I didn't stop and I wasn't gonna take I wasn't gonna take this as being the end you know I also have a nine-year-old son that I wanted him his life to stay as normal as possible and for him to see his mom fight and come out on top so this is kind of not just for me but this is for others mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned your coach. We haven't have your coach here. Darren, now this is a rather unique situation. Yes, it is. Um, 
getting her ready for a show, uh, do things change now in terms of the type of preparation that you would do to get her ready for a show? She talked about the specific types of foods and things that she needs to eat uh, for cancer. Um, does that change the diet and things uh, versus what you would it normally do? It just becomes do? more specific. I mean, we definitely work together. This is a team effort, so it's always a give and take. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. Every week she's going to tell me how her body is responding, you know, how she's feeling with things, and then we make adjustments when we need to. Really. That's, that's, I mean, she's made it through. So, you know, she doesn't want to rely on that. And now it's move forward. Mm-hmm. So, and like you said, she's, she's an aggressive person. So let's, that's, you want aggressive people only move forward. They don't move back. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I noticed you already look like you're in tremendous shape. So even <laughs> after going through this, you're, you're in great shape. Yeah. Um, what are the, are, do you find that you're weaker after going through all of this? Is it set you back in any way? It's, I can only speak for myself, obviously, yeah. not what other people go through. But I was still at the gym every day. I didn't lose a pound. I actually put weight on um, size-wise. And I just, so I you, felt So great. you were training through I all the therapy? through all of it. That wow. was, for me, that was my mental release. I wasn't home crying, right. you know, wallowing in poor me. I was at the gym getting it done because for me that's where I feel good and that's where I feel normal yeah so for me to be able to be in the gym and to train through this that was my normalcy yeah and uh, not that this is about me in any way I I had a rather major surgery and one thing I had a friend that called me that had um you know he he had a similar type of thing happen he said first thing you got to do is get out of the hospital as soon as possible because what happens is that people can easily take on like a victim mentality um and just start you know feeding into that and then they kind of give up yeah. and you kind of the faster you get up and you know that it actually gets your body to move to to start healing faster yeah. ironically they say that smokers actually um recover from surgeries faster because it gives them a reason to get up and yeah. move around right. so that so that just goes to show just the inspiration of having something to to do right. did, did doctors try and talk you out of training or tell you not to train? No, my doctors just said not to push it too far. Mm-hmm. Um, I know when I was going through my the first round of my treatments, I was hitting some PRs and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my doctor's not like, it I don't, yeah, he's like, I don't think you need to be hitting some PRs right now, he said, but She's for me to be... <laughs> 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 like, um, he just said, you know, keeping fit and healthy and strong is really what you need to do to get through stuff like that. So... I was a little bit tired. My endurance maybe was down, but my strength wasn't down. Like I couldn't go run a marathon, but I felt like I could bench press a house. Mm-hmm. So. I, blame, I blame that on her not liking to do cardio. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it too. <laughs> so what's the battle plan for her now, Darren? We're just, just keep on improving her. I mean, yeah. obviously there's, there's nothing that can keep her down, so we're just going to keep on growing and building. I mean, uh, she, like you said, she's already starting from a, from a good position surprisingly enough from everything that she's gone through um and like you know the more advanced athlete needs a stronger stimulus well her body has been subjected to stuff that is so intense i mean i can only imagine how intense her workouts are going to have to be (laughs) and are already but are only going to become more intense and uh i mean she feeds off positivity she feeds off this 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 type of stuff so it's only it's it's very interesting to see what she's gonna be able to achieve yeah. You know, how, have other people in the sport been supportive? Have you gained Absolutely. new fans? Yeah, I, I've had a lot of support through this. Uh, reached out to a lot of people too that's going through it, and if I can help with my story and 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 talk to them and say, you know what, it's it's hard what you're going through, but if you can stay positive and strong, you'll get through this. So I've met a lot of people, um, yeah, with cancer and different stories, um, and a lot of people re- reached out to me that had been through similar stuff. So great thing with social media is you can be support for each other mm. which has been wonderful what I've said during this because I had to go stateside to get help mm-hmm. um, I would like to see funds for individuals mm-hmm. so to help somebody that needs support and in, in something individually not just like the breast cancer fund right. you know or whatever cancer fund it's it would be nice to see uh, some kind of funding that could go to the individual 
for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, if they can't afford something or if they have to go stateside for surgery that they didn't have to pay out of their pocket. And I was really lucky. I had a friend set up a Facebook um, donation mm -hmm. so that I could go over to the States to get the help that I needed. And people donated and raised the money for me to be able to go over and pay. Her name is Nicole Servich. All right. We want to give her a shout out, Nicole. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Nicole. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we we're going to capture you mm -hmm. um, competing. So mm -hmm. I don't know what show that's going to be. I know you're doing Toronto and Toronto maybe sure. maybe something we'll else. So. else. Yes, we still have to finalize that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe do what Mark said and go Europe side. Go Europe. Yeah. 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 There's definitely uh, there's a lot of, I mean, there's so many shows she wants to do. But it's almost like you have to control her because she's so. It's like mm -hmm. she's been given this. I don't. Know, I don't want to sound so absolute, but it's almost like she's given a second chance, Absolutely. and she wants to go all out, mm -hmm. and make a big statement. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't speak for her, but in the situation I faced with surgery, it actually even pushed me more to realize how short life is oh. and how much you really need to seize the opportunities in front of you so it definitely changes you and it's unfortunate that sometimes we need that mm -hmm. to to see the bigger picture of life and to appreciate things more like family friends relationships we, we take for granted sometimes you know we just think we're we're always going to be here mm -hmm. <laughs> life is all about lessons right mm -hmm. and this was this was a big one for, i mean not one. just for her i mean that was the I guess a definite benefit with the social media and, and all the support she had is, I mean, you probably, she helped more people than she realizes. I mean, you know, it, it spanned, it doesn't matter where you went, mm -hmm. Canada or US, people knew what was going on. I mean, that was because of the, the social media and the support and everyone just couldn't believe, you know, what was, what was going on and on the, on the negative and now more so even on the positive now mm -hmm. that she has made a full recovery and she is now <laughs> gonna be going back on the circuit and in my opinion, I mean, looks the best she's ever. I mean, it, it's just. Yeah. I mean, she she achieved great before, and I think now with this, like I said, new lease on life, a new, a new a higher expectation for herself. I mean, she's proven herself now, man. If I can overcome that, that set of squats is gonna be nothing. Exactly. <laughs> so, and that show is gonna be nothing, and it's yeah. just it's gonna be really. Uh, awesome to see it's really gonna be awesome to see like so many of us rush as to what's next what more what's next what's more and mm -hmm. and i was the biggest culprit of that you know i opened up a business eight years ago i bought a building last year renovated it like i'm always constantly piling my plate but i don't think i was ever living in the moment and it's really taught me now to enjoy the relationships and the friendships and the people that i meet in my life and live in that moment mm -hmm. and that's a huge that's a huge change for me Absolutely. Well, we're really excited to be able to follow your journey, Thank and you. um, we'll just continue. The we'll, James. we'll continue to follow it, and <laughs> yeah. you know, I think it's going to be a great thing for not only your fans, but you know, hopefully, we reach a wider audience. Absolutely. So, thank you for very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Transformation. I'm with Sean Vanatine, who just stepped off stage today for the first time doing his first bodybuilding competition. How does it feel? feels, it feels amazing. It feels like a, it was worth it. Great experience. Met new people. I feel, I feel uh, humbled. I feel empowered. Even though I didn't place, it just... I feel better, better about myself, self-confidence. So most of us have some obstacles and challenges along the way. What were you say? What would you say would be um, the biggest obstacles that you had to face to get to this point? Diet uh, and anxiety. I was I was worried coming up as if he approached. Uh, uh, how, how many people were going to be here and where, how many people were going to be in the room and uh, if, if my body would be adequate, all kinds of, uh, yeah, you know, I just wanted to do my very best and impress the people that helped me. Working up towards doing this, what made you decide to compete in a competition? I've always wanted to do it. I've always wanted, thought of it as uh, Looking, uh, looking powerful when you and when mentally you don't you don't feel uh, 
when you're an introvert, I just want to come out. I want my my feelings, and I want to express how I express myself on stage as powerful, and have a and look good. And I want everyone to see me. I want to do a good job. Okay, you made. I'm your fellow cast member, and you made me very proud to be a part of this show with you. Because I know that you had to work extra hard to get your mind in a certain place to to bring yourself to the stage. What kind of things, other than the training and the diet, what kind of things did you have to do to prepare yourself for today? I had to develop a, a routine, and write it on the right on board, every list, everything I had to do. Uh, I had a. I talked to a few of my doctors, you know, try to get them to. to, to I, I went to go to groups, told them about what I was doing. You know, they they were surprised at the step I was taking, you know, that, that someone would go, go would want to be in front of people. Family talked to me. The, I, I just needed everyone's support. I couldn't do it alone. No. Um, you really nailed it when you said this is something that you can't do alone. You do rely on a lot of support of family and friends. And a lot of people don't understand why we choose to do this some days. I don't understand. Yeah. Um, but you're right in that it requires a lot of support. Um, what kind of support did you have? My mother, she's been a great support system. She helps me every step of the way. Ever, ever since I can ever remember, it's been my mom. And uh, they put me with uh, Keo Necra, my trainer, and she's been great. She's very positive, great positive influence. It's wonderful. And I, that's how I want to be. I want to be a positive person. I, I don't want to be negative. Okay? I, I was negative before. I don't want to be like that. I want to think towards the future. Well, Sean, I'm not sure if you if you know this, but there's a lot of people that are going to see this, and there's a lot of people that are learning your story today, and they're going to draw inspiration from you. Yeah. I'm not sure if you if that's something you know. But there's somebody who's watching you, and, and like you know what, if Sean can do this, maybe I can do this, or maybe you know they can change in some way, in some direction. In I, I hope so. I hope I. You are. Someone with you anxiety. Are. Can reach their goals no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be bodybuilding. It could be anything else. Maybe getting a, a better education, university. So, would you say this experience has changed other parts of your life? Yeah, it, it, it empowered me. It made me feel more self conscious I haven't done anything in a long time, and now I stepped out on stage, and I, I, I can. I, I'm gonna rise up again and do something else. I believe you will, Sean. I want to be more independent. And I, I spent the whole day amongst a whole bunch of people I didn't know. And I could be, I know I could be more independent now. Right, Ken, there's, there's a lot that uh, I think you find through the experience of getting ready to compete, of pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, you get to see where some of your real gifts lie. Yeah. I think this is really just scratching the surface for you, and I think there's a lot of wonderful things in the future for you. Yeah. Keep working hard. And we're, we're damn proud of you. Keep it up. Son, after many long years of being gone, your brother John 